Oregon. Today I want to have a look at why the sky is blue in the middle of the day and why it turns red at sunset. And to do that all we need is a little bit of milk, some water and a humble torch. Uh, there's a rather more um, specialised piece of equipment in the form of this oval flower vase. But you'll see why that's um, a useful little bit of apparatus later on. Let's have a look at our sky. So now we have our torchlight coming through the short axis of our oval vase. And this is more reminiscent of the sun being high in the sky. It's coming through less atmosphere. And what you can see here is that uh, the milky water has a sort of bluish tinge to it. Um, and that's, of course, again, mimicking what the sky looks like. Our sky looks blue on a sunny day. So here we are with a uh, torch on one side of this oval vase, webcam on the other. The light is going through a much greater length of um, our diluted milk and you can see a very distinct reddy colour to what's coming out the other side. So this is mimicking the sunlight coming through a thicker layer of atmosphere. A layer of atmosphere it's forced to come through as it gets low on the horizon. We're familiar with the fact that light can be reflected from mirrors for instance. It can be transmitted through thin window panes uh, or it can be absorbed and converted to heat. But light can also be scattered, which is a slightly different process uh, in terms of its understanding within physics. Think about light being bounced around uh, within thousands of shiny ball bearings, for instance. But the ball bearings we're going to be talking about are about the size of the molecules of gas that make up our atmosphere. Um, and the phenomenon of light scattering uh, from things of this size, really small things, in other words, um, was first studied in detail by uh, Lord Raleigh. Um, and he was doing this work during the 1800s. So you won't be surprised to hear that um, the whole process is referred to as Raleigh scattering. Now, what he found was that the scattering is much more pronounced at shorter wavelengths. Um, and that is the key thing in terms of understanding what we see in terms of the colours of our sky. So if you remember what we uh, looked at in the past, in a previous video, in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, we have, of course, the blue end of the colours in our rainbow, um, and we have a reddy end, and in between we have all the other colours, all right? So we have yellows and oranges and greens and so on. All right, so that's our electromagnetic spectrum. And these, the blue end of the spectrum, so out to violet, are the shorter wavelengths and out at the red end are the longer wavelengths. So essentially, what Raleigh's understanding of this light scattering effect was, uh, was that the light from this end of our spectrum will be scattered much more um, so in every direction, 
sideways, upwards, downwards, and so on. Um, and these significantly less. Okay, so in terms of the sky, uh, what we're seeing is, uh, and we're not talking about looking directly into the sun now, of course, that would be rather silly, but we're talking about looking up away from the direction that the sun uh, reaches us from, and we see blue colours, and we see blue colours because it's this end of our electromagnetic spectrum that is being scattered. It's being bounced uh, sideways, as it were. So those are the colours we see in the sky. Uh, and actually it affects what colour we see, we think the sun is. That's why we look at the sun and we think it's sort of a yellowy white. Uh, again, we talked about this in an earlier, uh, an earlier video. Um, the more the atmosphere the sun has to come through, the more pronounced this effect is. So if we're coming in at a low angle, so in other words the sun's low in the sky, um, so let's have a portion of our Earth's surface down here, um, and we have our amazing atmosphere sitting above it, our thin layer of protection. Um, if the sun's coming in from directly overhead, we're going through relatively short path of the atmosphere. As the sun gets lower towards the horizon, so we're coming in here now, right, you'll notice that the length the path through the atmosphere that the light has to take, because it's at an oblique angle, is now greater. So there is even more of this rally scattering taking on, uh, taking place. And actually now it, we begin to see a notice, noticeable amount of the green light being scattered as well. And what's left of the light that comes through to the ground uh, is then de facto just the reds, oranges and yellows. Which is why when the sun is low in the sky we tend to see those colours more than we see any other colours. And that's precisely what we've illustrated uh, with our dilute solution of milk in water. And it really was dilute, that whole vase was had something like a um, dessert spoonful of milk put into it. Uh, it really wasn't much at all. However, it's important to put in a caveat at this stage. So what we see in the sky then uh, is a manifestation of Rayleigh scattering. It's light bouncing off um, air molecules or particles that aren't much bigger. Actually what we were seeing in the milk is not Rayleigh scattering uh, because uh, the particles that we've got in the milk um, are actually simply uh, little droplets of fat that are dispersed in the water. Um, this by the way, this dispersion is called a colloid. Um, and these fat droplets are actually far bigger than the particles that give rise to Rayleigh scattering. And in fact, the light scattering we're getting in this uh, instance is actually named after a guy called John Tyndall, uh, so you won't be at all surprised uh, if I tell you that this process is called Tyndall scattering. And although the modelling, the mathematics uh, in physics is somewhat different between these two, uh, it turns out that Tyndall scattering um, from these larger particles behaves in a very, very similar way to Rayleigh scattering with very small particles. 
So, in fact, we're able to illustrate with our um, colloidal suspension of fat particles in water what we're seeing in the sky. Because, as I say, these two things behave in comparable ways. Uh, it also, of course, explains why uh, when we look at a sunset through, dare I say it, polluted skies, where there's a lot of smoke particles or perhaps pollen grains, that sort of thing, uh, we're not actually getting Raleigh scattering, we're getting Tyndall scattering, but the effect is the same in the sense that we have a very enhanced view uh, of the red, yellow and orange colours in our spectrum uh, under those conditions. So the sun low coming through um, polluted atmosphere uh, will actually give us a very much redder sunset. OK, so we've looked at the um, colours of the sky uh, and labelled it as Riley scattering. We've illustrated that effect using this other physical process called Tyndall scattering. Uh, in our colloidal suspension of milk. I thought while we were here we ought to talk a little bit about um, why the clouds appear white unless of course they're very thick in which case they absorb all the light um, and they become much darker. Uh, but if we're looking at fluffy white clouds for instance or even I have to say um, if we're out looking at fog, why do those appear white? Well, they appear white because, again, we've stepped up in particle size from this, you know, pollen, smoke, that sort of size, uh, um, and our little fat droplets. Um, we've stepped up now to the size of water droplets in cloud or in fog. Um, and this was studied by yet another physicist, uh, Gustav Mee. So this is labelled, surprise, surprise, Mee scattering in this case. And Mee scattering tells us that rather than being scattered sideways and so on, uh, as these two uh, indicated, the light coming through particles of, of this much larger size tend to be scattered forwards. Um, and so that's why we see these uh, as white. So that's actually quite um, quite interesting in its own right. And there are other forms of light scattering. We can talk about those another time, but it's hardly physics in the house. At least these things uh, we can see through our windows. I'm going to put um, a link or two in the blurb that goes with this video um, and on my blog site, uh, which will direct you to some other really nice demonstrations of what's going on, uh, uh, certainly in, in these cases up here. But I think otherwise, um, that's all for now. <laughs>